Hey folks, we are working on another cloud pour today. I have my colors mixed up and they are freshly mixed up so they are going to be filled with bubbles, but I just couldn't wait and I wanna do a test with these colors before I do something bigger to make sure that it's gonna look the way I want it. So I was inspired by my slop bucket actually. Um, so with one of my last kind of fiery paintings, I had a lot of paint that dripped off the edge and I had to scrape it all up and save it. And when I scraped it all up and saved it and mixed it up, I had this like beautiful shimmery dark brown color. And I thought, oh my goodness, I love that. I would love to do a neutral pour with just like browns and coppers and sparkle. Um, so here's what we're going to be doing. We are first going to be using this little piggy cinnamon, which is a copper color. It looks a little duller here than it will dry. It'll dry a little bit darker, but that sparkle is what I'm after. Okay, next up is my wonderful slop bucket mix. Again, a beautiful like rich chocolate with a lot of gold shimmer and copper shimmer. There's all kinds of things. I'll do a quick clip so you can see the colors that I was scraping up in order to get that. Uh, we are going to follow that with, this is um, Amsterdam Naples Yellow Red Light. And I added a bit of burnt umber to it to darken it a bit. Um, I should also mention that when I thought of these kind of neutral coffee colored chocolate s'mores kind of um, cloud pour, I thought of a video I saw from Willie B Studios and that's where I got some of these color ideas from. Um, so I did just wanna give a shout out to Willie B there for the inspiration. Uh, this is my Vallejo Pearl Medium cloud mix. It's one part Vallejo Pearl Medium to one part Artist Loft soft body acrylic in white to two parts Floetrol. Okay, then we are going to follow that one up with Burnt Umber, just a nice warm brown color. And finally, what I have in here is another copper. This one is Artist Loft Copper. Uh, I didn't wanna use all of my good Amsterdam copper because I also use Amsterdam copper for a cell activator for blooms and it's great for that. And this Artist Loft Copper has been sitting in with my paints forever and I have never used it before. So I thought, might as well give it a go. So here's Artist Loft Copper. Okay, so that's all my colors and how I'm going to layer them. So I will get you down and we'll pour the cup and then pour out the painting. Okay, we're ready to fill the cup. So let's get going. We can see if this works. <laughs> all right, so this cup, I have um, a couple of lines on it. The bottom line is three ounces, the top line is four ounces. And for an eight by eight canvas with about half an inch on the side, um, I need about 3.2 ounces, so just a little bit more than this bottom line. So that's what I'm shooting for in my final uh, volume of paint. So we're going to start out with this little piggy cinnamon. We are going to follow that with slap bucket brown. After Slot Bucket Brown comes Amsterdam Naples Yellow Red Light with a little bit of Burnt Umber. Then we are going to add our Cloud Mix. After the cloud mix, we are going to put some burnt umber. We're gonna follow that burnt umber with Artist Loft Copper.
And then we're gonna do the last little bit in the burnt umber again. Okay, so that's it. Our cup is filled, we're ready to pour. Let me get these paints out of the way. All right, before we pour this out, I'm going to lay a little bit of the copper down in the center and then spread it out so that we have a wet canvas to pour on. So let me get my spreader. And we'll probably have some lovely additions to our slot bucket after this because we have enough paint to cover the canvas without adding this base coat, <clears throat> but it will help it flow. And I don't like fighting with my canvas to get paint everywhere, especially like the, <clears throat> excuse me, the um, square canvases are a little awkward to do these cloud pours. It's so much easier to do round, um, but the rounds are just so expensive. So when I'm doing a test, it's like, I'm not going to use a round board just to test it out most of the time because they cost too much. All right, so that's, you know, ish what I'm looking for. We've got some coverage around the edges and we can work with that. Okay, so I'll set that down. We're gonna torch some of the bubbles before we get started. And like I said before, these paints are just mixed up. So I know they're full of bubbles and that means my final piece is gonna be filled with bubbles and oh well. But I can try and get some of these at least out of the base before we get going. There's just so many. I mean, that's what happens when you just mix something up. That's why it's always better to wait. Okay, so that is done. I can still see a ton of bubble holes. Okay, it is what it is. Are you ready? Okay, so I think we're gonna do a twisty twisty, not a spiral, but we'll go to one side and then we'll go back and that's kind of my plan for this one. So fingers crossed, here we go. I don't usually talk while I'm pouring this out because I'm holding my breath and trying not to mess up in case you were wondering.
We're down to the last little bit. <clears throat> so I think I'll do a little spiral. Oops, a little ring pour right here before I reach my hand in there and try and grab it. <laughs> mm, always mess up the dismount. I'm sure there is a way to do a perfect dismount. I have not found it yet. All right, so we're starting to go off the edge. So I'm going to tilt it back this way, maybe where you can see it, uh, just to get it away from those edges a little bit. And then we'll let it sit for a few minutes to develop before we stretch it out. So I'm just gonna wipe this off, make sure we are not encouraging you to go over the edge. All right, so let's wait while it percolates. I'm gonna go clean up, I'll be right back. Okay, I think that's about as much time as we're getting because it's starting to go off the sides anyway, so it is what it is. Um, so I'm just gonna try and even out uh, the paint on the edges here so that it flows just as easily over the corners as it does the rest of it. This extra paint is kind of helpful for that. This is very copper right now. And you might be wondering why I put the copper down. I put the copper down because um, the copper is the artist loft paint and it's the cheapest one I was using. Um, you know, that's just the reality of the situation is that I don't wanna waste my expensive paints on background. So the Artist Loft paints, because they are so inexpensive, um, are a really great choice for that specifically. Okay, so we've got some movement, we've got some cool stuff happening, we're gonna stretch it out. I think we are going to go, we do have some cool, cool stuff happening with the clouds, I'm loving that, okay. And you know, hopefully this can go right back into the brown slop bucket. If not, I might have to add some more of that burnt umber. It looks like the burnt umber is sinking a little bit. I did notice that it was a little bit thicker and I added a little more Floetrol to thin it out, but I think I might have to add even more. So this test is great for identifying problems in consistency that may or may not exist. Um, all right, so let's get going. Um, what did I say? We're going down that way first. All right, so let's grab some of this paint and see if we can't start off by helping that edge so it's not so naked. Okay, so there we go. Down to this corner first. All right, so see how much of the clouds we lost there? That's okay because we are going to stretch it out. So let's turn this around. And we're gonna go down to the opposite corner. Got a lot of copper on this side, so that's fine. All right, good enough. We'll go back to the center. Yeah, this is definitely more copper than I wanted and less brown than I wanted. So I'm gonna to have to adjust that mix a little bit. All right, so now let's do top and bottom. I'm gonna go this way first. All right, let's bring it back and go down to the final corner and see what's left.
there are some really cool brown cells. And the middle looks, oh man, I flipped over two of my stands. It's gonna be a problem, okay. Come on, little stands. Okay, let's put you back. It looks like we have plenty to add to our slot bucket. All right, so what do we got left here? I kind of like this, very cool. Okay, so right this moment, the copper in the center is looking a little dull. And um, that's just because of the Floetrol. As soon as it dries out, that Floetrol goes clear and you can see that copper in its full beautiful form. Um, which doesn't tend to happen as much with the, with the tube paints um, because the tube paints, a lot of them are opaque and so they take over and you can't see the flow trawl. Uh, even the ones that are semi-opaque or semi-transparent, they're a little better at blocking out that color of that flow trawl. Uh, but, oh, I just love the movement in this piece. I am really excited <laughs> to do this on a larger scale and like I said I'm gonna have to adjust the consistency of that brown um, a little bit so it matches so it comes up a little bit more because I would much rather have more brown and less copper although copper is a gorgeous color I do love it uh, so wipe my copper fingers off um, so that's what we have let's see do we want to move it anymore are we doing pretty good I think I might tilt it back a little bit so I don't know, I kind of like it being off center, I guess. Maybe we'll leave that. I kind of like the movement in this piece, so I'm just going to let that be the composition and we'll see how it dries and make a plan for a bigger piece. I am absolutely loving this, though. Um, really, really love the cells when they go translucent and you can see the colors underneath and you get all of these different shades of brown popping through. Um, so awesome. Good test. Like it. <laughs> all right. Let me take you in for a close up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I will catch you next time.